Hi, I'm Jim, and in the midst of a tumultuous season where everything seems to be up in the air and people are losing their livelihood and asking what's next and praying that God would provide for them, I want to talk to you a little bit about losing your job and what happens next. Uh, and I speak to you from personal experience. I've had the rug pulled out from under me, and so I know a lot about that experience, and I know what God did in the midst of my experience. So I want to, I want to talk a little bit about my own reflections, and I want to talk about them by way of looking at what the Israelites went through when they wandered in the desert, when their, their homeland of so many years was suddenly gone and they were wanderers looking for a place to call home. Um, I remember in those early days, there was a moment where uh, I sat together with one of my uh, friends on Sunday afternoon after church uh, for, for lunch. We were starting a new church and didn't have any budget, any staff, any supplies, any resources. And we sat together on one of those first Sundays together uh, at lunch, and he said to me, you know, we're going to need a, a projector in order to put lyrics up on the screen so that people can sing in worship. And I said, yeah, we need to figure that out. Well, at four o'clock that afternoon, I received a text from a woman I hadn't talked to in a while who literally said to me, God told me to give you a projector, and I want to meet you tomorrow for coffee to give you my projector. And we've used that projector in our ministries ever since then. That wasn't something we planned for. That wasn't something we went and sought out. It, it just happened. And, and so one of the things that I've discovered in the midst of those times where uh, the world is out of control and you don't have the same safety and security you used to have, uh, the supernatural is better than safety. And seeing God provide for you is better than providing for yourself. And so as frightening as it was for me to not know what tomorrow looked like, I wouldn't have experienced the miracles of God's intervention if I hadn't been in that place. And so as scary as it is, entertain the possibility that God has even better things planned for you than what you had before or what you expect for yourself. Secondly, I, I learned uh, a lot about prayer in those uh, early days of starting a church where everything was new and nothing was planned. Um, and one of the important practices of prayer that I started back then and that I continue today, and I'd encourage this uh, to you, if you're in a place of in-between times and if you're not sure what's next, uh, pray with open hands. Um, literally, as you pray, uh, sit with your hands open uh, and let that be a sign to you uh, that, that nothing you have is, is yours. What God puts in your hands today is still his. And he doesn't give us things so that we'll clamp down on them and hold on to them. He puts them in our hands so that we'll use them in his service for today. And when he needs to move them somewhere else, he can move them somewhere else. But he hasn't forgotten us. He hasn't left us alone. The Israelites, when they were wandering through the desert, experienced this because they got out into the desert and there was no food. Their regular supplies of food were not there. And they complained to their leader, Moses, and said, what are we supposed to do? Why did you bring us out here? And God made bread literally fall from the skies and collect on the ground. And every, moment, every, every morning, they could go out and collect the bread that they needed for the day. Every day, God provided for them. So later on, when Jesus would teach his disciples to pray, give us this day our daily bread. He's remembering the miracles of God and, and how God provided for his people in an in-between time in the wilderness. So when we're in an in-between time, we pray with open hands and we pray, God, give me what I need for today. Uh, and God says, I, I, I know you, I know your needs, I know your worries, uh, trust me, trust that I know what you need. Uh, our church is in a, a practice now every day at 6.25 p.m. of praying together the words of Matthew 6.25, don't worry about your life, your food or your clothes, God knows what you need. So every day at 6.25 p.m., join us in praying uh, Matthew 6.25, pray with open hands and say, God, you know what I need. I trust you. Take care of me. I learned in that season that, uh, that peace was better than panic and that living in peace with the fact that we're in God's hands is far better than anxiety-driven planning. Uh, in fact, peace is better than planning. Uh, living, living in the peace of knowing that God watches over us is the best thing we can ask for. Uh, a third important lesson in that uh, early season uh, as a church where we were just figuring things out, where we, we didn't know what was next, um, I remember learning 
uh, early on that uh, freedom, was, freedom was better than fear. Uh, living in freedom, living with the, the idea that God had really given us resources to share and to care for others and to give to others and that we could, we could give with reckless abandon because God would provide for us. That was the story of the early church. In Acts chapter 2, it says they gathered uh, for, uh, to study the apostles' teaching and for fellowship, for the breaking of bread and prayer, and everybody sold what they had and gave to anyone who had need. Uh, they had this reckless kind of generosity. Uh, and, and, and did that out of uh, the compassion of their hearts and faith in God. Uh, in our early days as a church, uh, we took on the responsibility of caring for another little church in town, which was struggling and didn't have resources. Uh, and here we were, this little startup church, and, and we should have been uh, most likely stockpiling resources for ourselves because we didn't know how far out we could plan. And instead we started pouring into another church and trusting that God would help us care for others. Uh, and so in this season where so many people feel empty-handed, uh, and they feel like that means they need to grab hold of whatever they can get and, and store it and stockpile it. Um, the life of faith is a life of freedom. And in freedom, we, we open up our hands and we trust that God loves us, God cares for us, God knows what we need, uh, God hasn't abandoned us, God hasn't forgotten you. Uh, at the time where you, you lose your job and your livelihood, God is, is reaching out a hand for you to say, take my hand, I'll take care of you, I'll provide for you. I've got everything you need. And so in this season, uh, it's, it's the challenge to we who are the church, we who are followers of Jesus, to live by faith. And when our, our normal channels of supplies and resources are cut off, we turn to Jesus in faith and confidence and peace and say, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. That's our word for today.